Hi, I'm Daniel Smith, Southwest Regional Agronomist for the Nutrient Pest Management Program at the University of Wisconsin-Madison campus. Today I'm going to be chatting with you about using manure to reduce fertilizer needs. So how do I prioritize fall versus winter manure spreading? Winter manure spreading is a very big challenge, especially in the Driftless region and Upper Midwest region. Spreading the challenging fields in the fall helps a lot with this, as well as thinking about spreading those in the spring. Um, however, the question sent in was fall versus winter, so we're going to stick with fall for this particular example. Fields with those winter restrictions, they're difficult to get to in the winter due to some roads or maybe they're up and over a hill, should always be spread um, whenever we can get to those under good weather conditions. When the soil is not frozen and there's not snow on the ground, that would be defined as not winter. We need to prioritize by manure need. Um, so maybe we have some fields that are low in phosphorus, low in potash, so we want to spread those fields when we can get to those and apply the appropriate rates. And then we want to save some fields back that are okay for winter spreading to meet winter spreading needs. So these would be fields that are fairly flat, are away from our squigma restrictions, are away from um, water bodies, um, and are fields that don't have other winter spreading restrictions on them. Um, influenced by slope or crop residue. So should I apply manure to meet the needs of a few fields or should I allocate manure across my entire farm? And I always say apply manure however it makes sense for your farm. However, using manure to its largest economic advantage is going to be focusing on those fields that have low phosphorus and potassium numbers with the greatest crop needs. So think about applying manure to our corn silage fields, to our corn grain fields that have those low P205 and K20 levels. Um, we can find those levels really easily um, via the crop screen on SNAP Plus. We get to this screen by clicking on this um, trifoliate. When we're in the cropping screen, it pulls up this cropping grid. And then we can move over to the right-hand side of the screen. We see University of Wisconsin recommendations and our over under application levels. This table gives every single field and every single crop we're growing for a particular crop year. And we can sort by levels. So I always go in here and I sort by P205 and K20 needs. We want to allocate our manure to our fields that have the greatest need based on those numbers. If we're having to haul manure in the winter time, there may only be a couple of these fields we can save for winter time based on those earlier restrictions we chatted about. So we want to allocate our manure in our fall and our spring time to those challenging fields that are difficult to get to and have the greatest need for nutrients in most cases. So what is my manure credit if um, we're not incorporating the manure and how long does that credit last? Um, we want to use the book values for bed pack or traditionally stored manure and that's the chart on the left hand side of the screen. Um, we see that in that chart we have dairy, beef, swine, poultry, and horse manure all indicated and for the appropriate livestock species we have liquid versus solid manure indicated. We also have um, at the very top time to incorporation and incorporation is important for the nitrogen component of the manure. We have different numbers depending on if it's greater than three days to incorporation. So this would be not incorporating at all in most cases. One to three hour, one to hour to three days of incorporation and less than one hour. And that would be if we're injecting um, or if we're spreading manure and immediately chisel plowing the field, that type of thing. If you look at these numbers for most of these manure values, there's a very slight difference between incorporation timings um, across the chart. Um, now for liquid manure, there is some larger differences. We want to test our liquid composted or other unique manure storage systems for a number here. Um, and that test is going to give us the same data that's on this chart. However, it's going to be very specific for our actual farm. And we want to test those sources because the storage and handling practices often make a large impact on our nutrient credit of that manure. We want to use the best information here because that has a huge economic value of using the appropriate nutrient credit for our manure. And then we want to apply using the best management practices to receive the full credit. So waiting until soil temperatures drop below 50 degrees in the fall um, to receive that full nitrogen credit the next spring, um, incorporate where appropriate um, and recommended, um, and then not incorporating where the soil conditions aren't appropriate to do so. Um, we can use that to manage our manure as a system. So what are our nutrients for bed pack manure? Um, bed pack manure is defined as a, a drier manure. Um, so we're going to use a solid manure table. Um, this is a little bit different table, same data as what was on the other table, except for just in condensed form for just solid manure. Um, and we would um, pick our species here um, for our farm and then 
Um, bed pack manure is often not incorporated, um, so we'd use our, our two pound credit for um, two pounds of nitrogen per ton of manure not in, incorporated, and then we'd have a three pound of P205 or plant available um, phosphorus and six pounds of K2O or plant available potassium um, for that credit for um, dairy manure, um, for example. So if the field is already high in phosphorus, but low in nitrogen, what are some of my options and opportunities? Um, typically, we're not gonna be applying manure to these fields um, because they're gonna be under restrictions from having those high, um, excessively high phosphorus numbers already. So we wanna get creative. Maybe there's some areas of the field that are low in phosphorus that we can go in and apply still. Um, and then we can apply commercial fertilizer to the rest of the field, or um, we can just simply choose to use a spring applied or a split application of nitrogen, depending on our soil type, um, for these fields. We want to keep good application records if we're applying manure on any part of the field and then trying to go back in, cover the rest with commercial nitrogen. Um, and then we want to apply our commercial nitrogen following best management practice. And this is often dictated by the timing, our type of fertilizer we're using, and our soil type. So should I take second or third year manure credits? Um, maybe. Second year credits are required for CAFO farms for manure. Um, and an example there is a manure second year credit following a 20 ton application of solid dairy manure is a 20 zero zero um, recommendation or, or fertilizer value. Um, and in 2021, that's worth approximately $10 per acre. So there's an incentive to use those second year credits, especially under challenging economic conditions. Um, and this is that chart from earlier, it provides the same data here. Um, our second year credits are indicated um, here in these boxes. So um, for any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to your local extension or land conservation office um, or feel free to call or email.